How many times in life do you call something by technically the wrong name? Like I call the vacuum cleaner the Hoover, but that's only because Hoover is a very well-known manufacturer of vacuum cleaners. It kind of slips into the vocabulary. Now, in the EV world, one of those names is Menekes. We've all heard reference to the Menekes connector, the Menekes plug, but it's actually a single company. They make all types of electrical equipment. So how has this word become part of our EV vocabulary? If you stay tuned, I'll tell you all the details. Welcome to the show, my name is Martin Lee, and if you like what we do here, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you never miss a show. Let's take a history lesson in Menekes. Back in 1935, the newly appointed master electrician Alois Menekes set up an electrician's workshop out of the small family home in the German town of Kekundum. Things went well, and in the 1940s, they turned their hands to making electrical plugs for various applications. The company did well. They expanded to about 250 employees by the mid-1970s. But we're here to find out about electric vehicles, so let's press the fast-forward button and get to 2008, when Menekes moved full force into electromobility. Now, they already had experience with three-phase connectors and adapted a plug into what's now known as Menekes Type 2. And thus, the name Menekes was installed. Their brand name became synonymous with the words of electric vehicles. And it kind of embedded itself into the hearts and minds of us EV drivers. Although Menekes had done a lot of hard work on developing the Type 2 plug, the real turning point was actually when it was adopted into international standards. As Menekes had been making various plugs for decades, the name the Menekes plug would have been confusing, so it kind of became known as the Menekes Type 2. Many of us, especially those in Europe with Nissan Leafs, are familiar with the Type 1, also in the US as well, called the SAE or J1772 plug. It's the connector that allows you to charge on a normal leaf at 3.3 kilowatts on your home AC, or if you upgrade it and splash the cash, 6.6 kilowatts with the onboard charger. But the problem with the Type 1 connector, it doesn't allow for three phase, so there was always going to be that upper limitation. So, it was recommended by the Association of European Automobile Manufacturers that the Type 2 connector became the standard over here. Then, in 2014, it became law in the European Union. So, how fast do these connectors charge? Well, let's talk about what this all means for you and I. So, the Type 2 cable connector has a fairly broad range of charging ability. It can deliver AC. It can deliver DC, and when delivering AC current, it can be single phase or three phase, an obvious advantage over Type 1. Most modern cars in Europe anyway, where it's standard, will take 7 kilowatts on the Menekes Type 2 connector. So what does that all mean in the real world if you're new to electric vehicles? Well, since we mentioned it already, the Nissan Leaf charging at just over 7 kilowatts could take maybe up to 60 kilometers of range per hour of charging. As you'd expect though, modern car manufacturers are upping the game and putting on board chargers that'll take more than 7 kilowatts. Take for instance the newly released VW ID4. It's a world car, in other words, sold in all markets, and they're putting in 11 kilowatts AC charge. Depending on your driving style, you could be adding up to 80 kilometers per hour. Handy if there are chargers like that littered around, say, supermarkets and shopping centers, the kind of place you go to for an hour or two. For some people, they can add enough juice in that short charging session, maybe over a coffee and a chat with a friend, to last all week. Hey, and it's even better if you can find one that's a free charge. But I'm not finished yet. For those of you that know me, I've talked before about owning a Renault Zoe. That fights the AC corner with a plum, and my car will charge at 22 kilowatts on its Type 2 AC connector. That's about three times more than normal, if there is such a thing as normal, like the Nissan Leaf. And as the Zoe is a smaller, lighter car, I can put 200 kilometers of range into that in just over an hour's charging. It's quite remarkable, really. Well, how could we get through the show so far without mentioning Tesla? It's interesting that around the same time as the European Union made the Menekes Type 2 standardized, the first Model S and X models were coming here to Europe. So, Tesla decided to fit those cars with a modified Type 2 connector, and that includes their supercharger network. 
But the reach of Type 2 extends to China, where the Guobao standard for AC specifies Type 2, but with male connectors at both ends. Well, it's been a long and successful road for the established German company that had a large influence on the European charging scene and embedded their name in everyday vocabulary, the Menekes connector. With the rapid development EVs, the only thing guaranteed is that nothing will stay the same. And it's going to be so interesting to see where charging standards and plugs go from here. So that's it from us today. Hopefully you learned a little bit more about why we use that word, Menekes, around Type 2 connectors. There's a whole new raft of terminology that comes with the world of EVs, and here we want to simplify that for you. That's why we invented the ABC of EV. Check out similar shows on our channel if you want to learn more, and let us know what you think of these programs that we make. What plug does your car use? And have you heard that phrase, Menekes, before? Does it translate to where you are watching around the world? Well, look, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up so we know to make more just like it. And we'll see you on the next one.